Good morning, everybody. My name is Reverend Candice Chibata, and today is April 10th. Um, we are celebrating our Hanamatsuri, our flower festival, um, to commemorate the birth of Siddhartha Gautama, who later became the Enlightened Buddha. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I thank you for uh, joining us today. We're so honored and we want to welcome our guest speaker, Reverend Carrie Kiyohara from the Makoao um, Buddhist Temple on the island of Maui. And so we'll be able to um, learn a little bit more about Sensei um, and then, of course, hear his Dharma message for this morning. So thank you so much, everybody, as um, we commemorate this very special event um, for Buddhists all over the world. Let me share my screen with you so that we can all participate today. Okay, um, so um, as always, we'll go ahead and start with the tolling of the bell or the concho. And the concho allows us um, to have this audio signal to um, really quiet our minds and quiet our bodies to prepare for today's service. This also allows us to really be mindful of this present moment that we know will never be recreated um, ever again. And so we're so fortunate to be able to gather together with um, the individuals of um, our temples, of course, Lodi, Walnut Grove, and Stockton, but of um, through the wonder of technology, we can be with um, others uh, through Zoom and YouTube as well. So why don't we all take a, a quiet moment of reflection during the tolling of the bell called the Concho. So we'll continue the service with our uh, beautiful opening meditation prepared by Mrs. Darlene Bagshaw. Make it. 
Dreaming Gasho Namu Ami Dabutsu Namu Ami Dabutsu Namu Ami Dabutsu Namandabuts 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 Thank you, Darlene. Um, it's so beautiful um, to see so many of the different Hanamidos uh, from all over the island. And it's it's kind of unfortunate since we're closed. Um, I, I feel a little bit incomplete. Um, however, we are featuring um, some of our Hanamidos from um, our previous year. I believe Darlene mentioned that this is from 2019. Um, so maybe we can imagine those being with us today. Um, and I look forward, hopefully, um, for next year when we're able to actually decorate our Hanamido and, and um, have everybody here for Hanamat City. Okay, so we'll continue with Kambutsuge. And uh, this is the gatha on bathing the Buddha image. And so although we don't have the Hanamido here, we can still chant this beautiful chant in the um, translation is on the bottom. And uh, typically this is chanted kind of like in a round where um, the Sangha members would chant after me. However, since we're um, not here at the temple and we're all um, at home safely, you can go ahead and, and chant along with me all of the, the lines. Um, and then I'll offer the Hyo Byakumon or the dedication or declaration of our gathering ticket today. We are fortunate to be here in this world where birth is difficult. We are even more fortunate to be able to meet the vow of immeasurable life and light that transforms us to become truly human. On this Buddha day, celebrating the birth of the baby Buddha, we are reminded of the rarity, nobility, and preciousness of each individual life that is sustained by infinite workings of all others. With humility and gratitude in our hearts, may we rejoice in the birth of Siddhartha Gautama, who had later become the Buddha, the fully awakened one. Namo Ami Dabutsu. Namo Ami Dabutsu. Namo Ami Dabutsu. Naman Dabutsu. Naman Dabutsu. Naman Dabutsu. Naman So we'll continue on with the sutra chanting of Jusege, three sacred vows. And again, this is a wonderful way for us to be together as one, although we are a part in the safety and comfort of our own homes. So please join me in the chanting of Jusege. Gah, 
しじょうぶつどうよしょちょうじぽくきょうみそもんせいふじょうしょうがくりよくじしょうねんちょうめしゅぽんきょうしぐむじょうどいしょてにしちにきえんだいこふしょむさいどしょじょうさんくみょこさいしゅやくなんかいひちえげんめしこのわんへいそくしょわくどつだつぜしゅもんこそじょうまんぞくいよどじぽんにちがつしゅじゅきてんこおんぷげんいしゅかいほぞおせくどくほちょうだいしゅちゅせぽししくくよいさいぶつくそくしゅとくほんかねしつじょうまんとくいさんがいよよぶつむげちつだつみぷしょかんがくえりくとしさいしょそんしがにゃこかたいせのかんどんこくしょてにんとうちみょうけんらまんだぶあ Namanda would sin a manda 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 would sin. Okay, thank you everybody for joining me in the sutra chanting. We'll continue with、uh, the three treasures. Please join me、um, by placing your palms together in Gashon. Three treasures. Hard is it to be born into human life. 
Now we are living it. Difficult is it to hear the teachings of the Blessed One. Now we hear it. If we do not deliver ourselves in the present life, no hope is there that we shall be freed from suffering and sorrow in the ocean of birth and death. Let us reverently take refuge in the three treasures of the truth. I take refuge in Buddha. May we all together absorb into ourselves the principle of your way to enlightenment and awaken in ourselves your supreme will. I take refuge in Dharma. May we all together be submerged in the depth of the doctrine and gain wisdom as deep as the ocean. I take refuge in Sangha. May we all together become units in true accord in your life of harmony in a spirit of universal oneness, freed from the bondage of selfishness. Even through ages of myriads of kalpas, hard is it to hear such an excellent, profound, and wonderful doctrine. Now we are able to hear and receive it. Let us thoroughly understand the true meaning of Tathagata's teaching. Namo Ami Dabutsu. Namo Ami Dabutsu. Namo Ami Dabutsu. Naman Dabutsu. Naman Dabutsu. Naman Dabutsu. Naman Dabutsu. Hey, thank you, everybody. Okay, so it's um, my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker for today, for today's Dharma message. And I had an opportunity maybe a, a few years ago um, to travel to uh, Maui to attend um, the Hawaii Kyodan um, ministerial meeting that they have in the summertime and was finally able to meet um, Reverend Kiyohara in person. And um, he was so kind enough to drive us to the airport too. So thank you, Sensei, for doing that. Um, and so I just wanted to properly introduce Sensei um, before his Dharma message. So Reverend uh, Kerry Kiyohara is the resident minister of Makawao Buddhist Temple on the island of Maui, serving the Hompa Honganji Mission of Hawaii. He was ordained as a priest of Jodoshinchu Honganjiha in 2016. And uh, Sensei graduated from Chuo Bukyo Gakuin Seminary in Kyoto, Japan, and he was certified as a Kyoshi teacher and assigned as a Kai Kyoshi missionary to Hawaii in 2018. Reverend Kiyohara previously worked as a CEO, COO, CMO, consultant and copywriter in Los Angeles, Tokyo, Beijing, Shanghai, and Honolulu. So his uh, previous life and previous career brought him to many different places. So uh, Reverend Kiyohara graduated with a BA and MBA degrees from the University of Southern California. And he speaks English, Japanese, basic Spanish, and survival Chinese. But he, uh, Sensei said that he's mystified by the kind pigeon, and that's the Hawaiian Creole English. And so without further ado, I'd like to uh, welcome Reverend Kiyohara as our guest speaker for today. Thank you, Sensei. Good morning. Thank you very much, Reverend Shibata. That's very kind of you to say. Uh, just as background, I have a connection to Stockton. Uh, my mother's side of the family, the Nakawatase family, uh, comes from Stockton. My mom was born in Stockton. So if any of you, if there are any Nakawatases running around, I'm probably related to them. <laughs> Uh, also, my brother-in-law is from the Central Valley, uh, the Matsubara family, so Dale Matsubara is married to my sister. So anyway, there is a very definite connection um, here. Uh, so this morning, good morning, uh, aloha kakahi aka, ohayo gozaimasu. I'm absolutely delighted to be sharing this moment of this day, of this unrepeatable life, together with you, the Sangha and friends from Stockton, Lodi, and Walnut Grove temples. Uh, today, we join in oneness with Buddhists around the world uh, in marking the birth of Siddhartha Gautama, the human being who awakened to reality as it is and became the awakened one, the Buddha, about 2,600 years ago. I'd first like to share a children's version of the story of the wondrous birth of the baby who would become the Buddha. As a child, I remember Hanamatsuri as the most fun service of the year, uh, with all the flowers, and incense, and lights, and especially pouring the sweet tea over the baby Buddha. And of course, there's always lots of food. In fact, there was enough food to feed a herd of elephants. Um, after that, I'd like to share the adult version of the story 
uh, because the story of the birth of the Buddha illustrates the fundamental truths of Buddhism. So let's begin with the children's Dharma story time. Let me change the slide. Live from Makawao on the beautiful island of Maui in the great state of Hawaii, it's children's Dharma story time. Beeha! Oops, where am I? Beeha! It's me, Bark Led the Dog, the Rascal Dog, the star of the children's Dharma story time. And this here is the love of my life, Lucy the Ladybug. Well, good morning, everyone. Aloha, Kako. Aloha for everyone. It's so nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us today. Dude, wait, Reverend Candace, you sure got a lot of Dharma buddies. <laughs> hey, Sensei, hope you're funny. Well, Barkley, thank you. I hope I'm funny too. Oh, Barkley, oops. Oh, Barkley, you're such a rascal trying to make Sensei nervous before his talk. Tooey, well, you're right, Lucy. Sorry, Sensei, I was just teasing you. I can't help it because I'm a rascal dog and inappropriate thoughts, words, and actions out of context is what rascal dogs do. <laughs> oh, Barkley, we love you because you are a rascal. Oh, shucks, now I'm all shy, give me a hug. Oh, let's give Sensei a hug too, okay. Let's give everybody a hug. Ah! Okay, okay, you love birds. Let me start with the story, okay? Uh, where are we? Uh, <laughs> today's story is the baby Buddha's birthday party, the story of Hanamatsuri. So once upon a time, a long time ago, in ancient India, there lived a king and a queen. Sorry, wrong slide. So King, king Sudotana was the king of the greatest kingdom of all in ancient India. He was a great leader, a wise ruler, and the people of the kingdom lived happily in peace and harmony. The queen, Queen Maya, was a beautiful, kind, and generous queen. She was always thinking only of the happiness of the people who lived in the kingdom. Can Sorry, you can you guys? Oh, I'm sorry, I was not mute. Oh, man. So you guys missed the entire opening introduction. That's somebody should have waved or no, something. <laughs> no, the, the Zoom crew oopsied, so you're good. <laughs> okay, okay, anyway. Um, so let's see. So the only thing that was missing in the lives of King Sudadana and Queen Maya was a baby to call their own. Uh, a baby who would grow up to be king or queen, a great leader, a baby they could love most of all. So one day, Queen Maya had a wonderful and mysterious dream. Now in her dream, a white elephant appeared and bowed and said, Aloha, your wish is granted because you are so kind and always thinking of the people who live in the kingdom. So the next day, the king and queen shared the wonderful news with all the people of the kingdom. Queen Maya was going to have a baby. Queen Maya was traveling to her parents' home to give birth to the baby, as was the tradition in ancient India. Along the way, Queen Maya became a bit tired, so they stopped to rest in the beautiful gardens of Lumbini. Queen Maya saw the most beautiful flower in a tree branch and reached up to touch it, when the baby popped out of her side, her right side. Siddhartha, the prince, the baby who would become, uh, who would grow up to become the Buddha, the awakened one, immediately walked seven steps. Lotus blossoms, lotus flowers blossoming under each foot. The baby Buddha raised one hand to point to the sky and lowered one to point to the, to the earth and said, in the heavens above and the earth below, I alone am the world honored one. Wondrous birds flew joyfully through the sky, their voices singing songs so beautiful, the music turned into flowers that fell from the sky. And purple clouds of incense smoke perfumed the gardens of Lumbini with the most wonderful aromas. And wonder of wonders, sweet rain, pure clean water fell from the sky and gently washed the newborn baby. Queen Maya, the court ladies, and all of the forest creatures danced with joy. And the people of the kingdom shared the joy and happiness of their beloved king and queen, who finally had a baby to call their own, a baby they could love most of all, 
a baby who would grow up to be king. And the baby? Well, the baby grew up to be the Buddha, the awakened one. And Shakyamuni Buddha, the baby uh, who became the Buddha, whose birthday we celebrate on the 8th of April, um, taught us about Amida Buddha's great love and great compassion, Namo Amida Buddha. And that's why we celebrate the baby Buddha's birthday as Hanamatsuri, which means flower festival in Japanese. So we, we make, we build and adorn a Hanamido or a flower palace, a very special altar for the statue of the baby Buddha. And we offer flowers and incense and lights and music. And that's why we also have the most fun part of Hanamatsuri, bathing the baby Buddha. In ancient India, sweet rain meant pure, clean water that all living beings need to survive. Here's a good one for you. Do you know why we often call it sweet tea? Let me tell you. When the story of the baby Buddha's birthday comes to China, they thought, hmm, sweet rain. That sounds like tian jia, which is a very special Chinese medicine. It's an herb that's very, very sweet when you make tea with it. So when Buddhism comes to Japan, the kanji characters for tian cha in Chinese can be read as amacha in Japanese or sweet tea in English. So more than a century ago, Japanese Buddhism comes to Hawaii and the mainland USA, and tian cha becomes amacha, which becomes sweet tea. Or when I was a kid in Los Angeles at Senshin Buddhist Temple, it was Lipton's tea sweetened with CNH cane sugar from Hawaii. <laughs> Imagine my, dis my, my surprise to discover CNH cane sugar actually comes from Maui or used to come from Maui. Uh, it was literally sweetened tea. I was shocked. Uh, if you have a chance, please try a taste of the authentic amacha, uh, as it's called in Japanese, because it's actually really quite sweet and it has a lot of medicinal benefits. So the story of the baby Buddha's birthday is a wonderful story with amazing and incredible things that show us just how special the birth of the Buddha is. And that's why we celebrate Hanamatsuri, the flower festival, every year. Now, I'm pretty sure if you ask your mommy and daddy or your grandma and grandpa or uncles and aunties about the time when you were born, they will tell you that you were the most beautiful baby in the whole world. They fell in love with you at first sight. When you were born, the sky was bluer, the clouds were whiter, the flowers looked more beautiful, and the bird's song sounded sweeter, and everything in the world was perfect. Everything in the world was wonderful. So today on Hanamatsuri, be sure to give mommy, daddy, grandpa, grandpa, auntie, uncle a big hug, because it's Hanamatsuri. And then ask them to tell you about how they felt on that very special day when you were born. Now, as Buddhists, we celebrate the baby Buddha's birthday to say, happy birthday, Buddha. Thank you, Buddha, for the Dharma teachings, especially Namo Amida Butsu, the truth of Amida's vow to save all people through birth in the Pure Land and becoming Buddha. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. My granddaughter's always telling me, gee, uh, Grandpa, how come the, the, the Dharma talk for adults is so boring? And maybe she's right. So for you, uh, young people, Mahalo for listening this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for listening this morning. Um, now, my generation, we suggest, hey, go outside and play, but I don't know if you kids do that anymore. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're going to start the Dharma Talk for Adults, which is going to be very boring. So children, you may wish to go do something else. And may your day be filled with aloha. Okay, we'll give the kids five seconds to leave. So. <laughs> Oh, sorry, kids. Oh, I missed the script. Okay. Hey, Sensei, you forgot something. Hopefully the kids haven't all gone away. Beha, wasn't that a great story? What part did you like? Really? I love that part, too. <laughs> well, I love how we get to pour sweet rain over the baby Buddha. And the Hanamido Flower Palace is so beautiful. Say, Lucy, what do you say? We go drink some of that sweet tea while Sensei is giving the Dharma talk for adults. <laughs> oh, you're such a rascal. Let's be sure to leave some for everyone else to try a taste. It's really sweet. Okay. So remember, children, be good, but not too much.
much. <laughs> okay, fade to black. Hey, Lindsay, you're not supposed to read that part. Okay, anyway, sorry. When you wake up at four o'clock in the morning, sometimes you forget where you are. So anyway, <laughs> so we are going to have the Dharma talk for adults now. Uh, and I'm shifting the focus a little bit because the Hanumatsuri for adults, you can see it is not as the story of you, the child, but rather the story of me, story of me, M-E, capitalized, my ego. So as adults, how are we supposed to interpret this story of the wondrous birth of the Buddha? How can we make Hanumatsuri more than just you know, simply a fun activity for kids, which by the way, it should be a fun activity for kids. It's the most fun you can have, the kids can have in the temple, come on. Uh, so next year, when we're meeting in person, let's do this. Um, so now, actually, just to be provocative, consider some of the elements of the story of the birth of the Buddha. Now, even as a kid, I understood the symbolism of the white elephant appearing in a dream and entering Queen Maya's right side. Now, even as a kid, my knowledge of human anatomy was a little bit different, so, hmm, okay. Um, or how about, you know, Queen Maya reached for the beautiful flower and the baby popped out of her side. Okay, I remember that. <laughs> um, since Gautama Buddha was, was born about 2,600 years before Jesus of Nazareth, one could argue that the elements of the story, immaculate conception and virgin birth, actually come from Buddhism. But I'm just being provocative, so let's go back to the story. Well, let me get this straight. The baby's born, immediately walks seven steps, and then declares, in the heavens above and on the earth below, I alone am the world honored one. This, you have to remember, I grew up in the 1960s, so I saw this as the baby is born, immediately takes seven steps, flowers popping up and birds flying, and he goes like this and he says, I am the greatest. I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest. This is Muhammad Ali, of course, uh, Cassius Clay during the 60s, uh, declaring that he is the greatest. Uh, now, even as a child, I was so impressed by this assertion of self. It's about me. It's about me, to use an Americanism. Uh, so any parent or grandparent, uncle, auntie, or adult who has taken on the responsibility of caring for babies and children and young adults instantly recognizes what baby is saying when baby cries. Ah, I'm hungry, feed me. Ah, I'm wet, change me. Ah, I'm bored, pick me up and pay attention to me. Right? So from the very beginning, baby learns, huh, it's about me. Oh, it's about me. <laughs> Right? So baby is biologically programmed to be self-centered, to survive. I mean, baby needs people to take care of them. So, of course, babies are self-centered. Baby is designed to be self-centered, which means when baby grows up, gee, we're designed to be self-centered. Baby is also designed to make you go crazy. Right? Why? Why? Why does, why does caring for a baby make you go crazy? Because baby is designed to break your attachment to self. Baby is designed to guide you to self-awareness. And this is the inconceivable working of Namo Amida Butsu. Amida Buddha's great compassion, great love and wisdom, reaching out to you just as you are, Namo Amida Butsu. So baby is designed to make you crazy, make you aware of yourself. Why, why, why is this important? Shakyamuni Buddha, the Buddha, the historical Buddha, taught that the fundamental human condition and the cause of all human suffering is stubborn attachment to a false idea of self, self, self. In other words, human nature is to live this unrepeatable life as if it's about me. The world is supposed to revolve around me. It's about carry. And if it doesn't go my way, I am not happy, which probably explains why I'm not happy most of the time. It's about me. This is the cry of the newborn baby Buddha. I alone am the world honored one. That has different meaning, by the way. But just to say that he's asserting, the baby's asserting the sense of self. Human babies, we do this all the time. I'm here, feed me. Um, now, as we become adults, do we see this repeated in our thoughts, words, and actions? Human beings are programmed to do this. So it's about me. This is our, our self-centeredness, our... Oops 
no button, um, our stubborn attachment to a false notion of self. This is our true human nature. All of the Buddha's teachings, all of Shakyamuni Buddha's teachings are focused on this truth and what to do about it. So this insight into human nature naturally leads to the truth of impermanence. All things change. Right? Everything that arises from cause and conditions will change. Nothing is permanent right? except the truth, except the Dharma. Nothing is permanent, including the self. Right? This leads to the scary bit, which is no one gets to live forever. Okay, intellectually, we can accept it. Wait a minute, that means me. <gasps> right? The truth of permanence applies to me. Oh, right? So in the adult version of the story of the birth of the Buddha, Queen Maya dies shortly after giving birth to Prince Siddhartha, and he's raised by his aunt. Uh, just as a side note, the aunt plays a significant role in opening the practice of Buddhism, opening Buddhism to women, uh, which became the first major religion Right, to open up the path to enlightenment to women. So ask Reverend Candice about this on Eshini and Kakushini Day, when we talk about the role of women in Buddhism. Um, so the children's version of the story leaves this part out. I mean, it's pretty obvious. We don't want to, we don't want to scare children, uh, even though the Buddhist perspective is that death is a part of life. And so children need to uh, learn to learn that truth. Um, but we, we tend to leave it out because we don't want to scare the kids. Come on. Uh, and, and it leads to the conclusion that the Buddhist truths are for adults, not children. So me, my ego, it doesn't like the truth that born human, my body and mind will decay over time. My body and mind will get sick or diseased, stop working as well as it does now. My body and mind, me, my ego, me, self, carry, inevitably reaches the end of life. <laughs> Right? Me, my ego, really doesn't like that truth very much. Now, as an ex-advertising man, I can testify to the reality as it is that every day, millions of people spend billions of dollars on skincare, hair care, plastic surgery, big house, big houses, bigger houses, expensive cars, and all kinds of luxury stuff in a desperate attempt to deny the truth of impermanence. Born human, you age, you get sick, you die. Intellectually, we know this, right? But my ego, me, says, <laughs> no. So Buddhist practice, right, which is the how to uh, awaken to reality as it is, says simply this. The historical Buddha says this, give up everything, renounce the material world, shave your head, become a monk, meditate, chant, study, until you realize enlightenment in this life, in this body, or you die trying. There are no half measures uh, in Shakyamuni Buddha's teachings. So Buddhist practice focuses on destroying the attachment to me, to my ego, this false self. Right? Buddhism is about going from, it's about me, our human nature, to it's not about me. Right? When you first realize it's not about me, it's not about me, ah. And then when things don't go the way that you want them to, you go, huh, it's not about me. It's not supposed, the world is not supposed to revolve around carry, even though my ego would like that. Actually, I prefer when the world revolves around me, but that's one of those things, right? So if you're not willing or able to give up everything you possess, everything, right? Your money, position, reputation, power, celebrity, or luxury, right? To live as a celibate monk, look that word up, celibate. Um, you're homeless. You're begging for food and water on the street every day. And then you have to chant the sutras. You're chanting sutras like four hours a day. Chanting the sutras is how you study the words of the Buddha. Right? You have to meditate constantly. You have to deny yourself everything. There's no sex, drugs, or rock and roll involved in traditional approach to Buddhism. Now, if you're not willing and able to do this, if you can't become a monk, there's no Buddhist path to enlightenment. There's nothing you can do to become Buddha in this life, in this body. Ah. But the Buddha's teachings, right? So historical Buddha's teaching and practice is really very specific. Renounce the world, give up everything, become a monk. Now, Shinran Shonin, right, the founder of Jodo Shinshu Hongganji tradition, he was a monk for 20 years on Mount Hiei. This is the, the Harvard, Stanford, MIT of Japanese Buddhism for centuries, from the fifth century to about the 11th century, 
when Shinran Shonin was alive. This was the center of Japanese Buddhism. And so he becomes a monk, and he tries for 20 years. By all accounts, he was a very good monk, a good priest. But he fails to realize enlightenment because he realizes his self-attachment is so strong, his ego is so big, he cannot break it, no matter how hard he tries. And thus he leaves the monastery, uh, monastery on uh, Mount Hie, and he eventually discovers the all-embracing compassion and all-inclusive wisdom of Amida Buddha, Namo Amidabha. In the Jodashin Shohonganji tradition, the true purpose of Shakyamuni Buddha being born in this world during our age is to reveal the Dharma, the reality as it is, that Amida Buddha and the vow to save all people through birth in the Pure Land is here, and it's here for me. It's here for me, Carrie. Wow. Right. Through the practice of Namo Amidabutsu, the practice of Nembutsu, the, the practice of mindfulness of Amida Buddha, in each moment of every day of this unrepeatable life, we, just as we are, we are brought to the faith of Shinjin and trusting the great love and great compassion of Amida Buddha. And this faith of Shinjin assures our birth in the Pure Land and thus becoming Buddha and our return in oneness with Amida to this human realm of confusion and delusion to guide others to birth in the Pure Land. So Namo Amidabutsu is the practice of mindfulness of awakening. First, awakening to our all too human nature. I am hopelessly self-centered. I'm stubbornly addicted to my ego. I'm addicted to me, my ego. And I pretend to have reached a spiritual understanding of reality as it is, when in fact, the existential question of why am I here is something that troubles me every day. The late Reverend Dr. Taitetsu Uno explained the practice of Nembutsu in this way. Namo is the left hand. This is me. I'm lost, alone, afraid. I am utterly human, searching for the way home. The right hand is Amida, great love and great compassion, working constantly in our lives to bring us, just as we are, to the faith of Shinjin and thus assuring birth in the Buddha, I'm sorry, birth in the Pure Land and becoming Buddha. Namo, Amida, Butsu. The two hands together, left and right hands together, me and Amida together, is Buddha, reality as it is great compassion and great wisdom. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. That's it. That's it. And so Buddhism basically says, just say it. Just say Namo Amida Butsu. And of course, our, our well-educated, critically thinking minds want to understand why, but that's a different lecture. Uh, and you can call me back for a seminar. So Reverend Candace, call me back for a seminar. It takes about two days to explain everything. No, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, so here today, on the occasion of Hanamatsuri, the flower festival, the baby Buddha's birthday party. Let's take a moment from our busy lives to push the pause button. Let's put our hands together in Gasha and bow our heads and just say, Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. And trusting in all inclusive wisdom and all embracing compassion for the great enlightenment to come. Namo And so, if that's a little bit too complicated, just say mahalo. Just say thank you, thank you, thank you. No matter what life throws at you this morning, this day, right? every moment of this day of your unrepeatable life, just say thank you. Just say mahalo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mahalo for listening this morning, and may your day be filled with aloha. Namo Amidabas. Thank you very much, and I'll turn the camera back to you guys. Thank you, Sensei, for your uh, wonderful message. We were so um, um, very honored to have both the children's and um, adult message, and we really appreciate um, that really nice reminder of our own existence but of course um this opportunity to uh thank be thankful for um this birth of this little baby how many years ago so many years ago that still impacts us every day of our lives so thank you sensei for your um, wonderful dharma messages we we truly appreciate you um being with us today especially um despite your very busy schedule too as well and um 
I'm, I'm so sorry you had to wake up so early. <laughs> so I'm sure you'll be going to sleep early tonight. But thank you so much for um, joining us um, for this very special service. We truly appreciate it. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sensei. Okay, so we'll continue on with um, one last recitation um, for our service. And um, we'll conclude this um with the, the golden chain. And this um, recitation will be led by um, Emily Wong, our Dharma School student, Emily Wong. Please put your hands together and got strong. I am a link in the Mita's golden chain of love that stretches around the world. I will keep my link bright and strong. I will be kind and gentle to every living thing and protect who, all who are weaker than myself. I will think pure and beautiful thoughts, say pure and beautiful words, and do pure and beautiful deeds. May every link in Amita's golden chain of love be bright and strong, and may we all attain perfect peace. Namo Dapsu. Namo Dapsu. Namo Dapsu. Thank you, Emily, for uh, your recitation today. Okay, announcements. I think we have quite a few announcements and of course our um, our showcase for our kids. And I believe Darlene is our uh, reader today for announcements. I'm your do everything behind the scenes and everything. So, <laughs> okay. So um, I am going to screen share as we go through the announcements. So let me see, oh, wrong one, not that one. So you can see some of these things that are gonna come up. So, um, but first of all, the Dharma School students will be um, preparing a, a story or will be presenting a story in the style of Kami Shibai, um, which you'll learn about from our uh, superintendent, Carrie Wong. Uh, we will have a Zoom prize drawing at the completion of this program sponsored by the Dharma School. So we hope you will stay on till the very end for your chance to win. Um, or let me see, actually I have the wrong thing up here. I need to change this to this one, I think. Okay. So our um, BC Social Welfare Committee in conjunction with the Hongpa Honganji okay. Mission of Hawaii. Um, it's not showing. Okay, let me try stop screen share again. Sorry. It's this one. It's not coming up. Well, you guys aren't going to see that one. So sorry. Um, it was in with attached to the karma. It is the um, in conjunction with their social concerns. We're sponsoring a Zoom event entitled Our Independent Lives, Interdependent Lives, Food Waste and Sustainability. This will remind us of how food waste reduction, compost with worms and worms and going compostable at a bone will help preserve our environment for the next generation. The event is free. It's on Saturday, April 16th, beginning at 1 p.m. our time. So come and learn how each of us can save our environment. Um, again, it is attached to the karma. There's a registration link. If you do not have it, if you contact the temple office and I will be sending it to Sensei to post on Facebook as well. The Sangha Club is continuing collection of aluminum cans and recyclable plastic bottles. Donations may be left by the white bin under the carport area. Help keep recyclable bottles and cans out of our landfills while supporting one of our youth organizations. Can you see anything on your screen now? No, it's not working. Apparently my screen share is not working. That's not good. Is it on there now? Okay. okay. So the Buddhist Church of Stockton scholarship packet, which is here on your screen, is available from the temple office. Please contact the office to obtain a copy via email. Applications are due at 4 p.m. on Friday, April, no, excuse me, May 13th. Um, thank you to all the organizations and individuals who contribute to supporting our temple youth. And as you can see, we have many, many scholarships available. So any a graduating high school student or those continuing in college, we do encourage you to apply. The YBA will follow, uh, will have a meeting following the Hanamatsuri program uh, provided by the Dharma School. And so let me see if I can get rid of this one. Now, is it on that other one? Nope. I am losing my screen shares. Why? Okay, here we go. 
Okay. And so um, remember, we need your help um, to continue providing these services and to prepare our facilities as we continue through our reopening process. Please donate your service offering by mailing it to the temple or donating through the church website. Um, this is a where you go on the right-hand side, right behind Reverend Shibata, I believe. I don't think you could see it, sorry. Is a donation button. And just click on that on our website, and we will gratefully appreciate anything you could provide to the temple. And then we have one more special announcement. On a more personal note, let me open this up. And let me, I don't want to block anything, so let me kill this little square here. Okay, so. Um, uh, a few weeks back, we informed you that our own Stephanie Doy was a candidate for the 2022 Northern California Cherry Blossom Queen. We are very proud to inform you that Stephanie was crowned the queen last night. Congratulations to Stephanie, Grandma Aiko Yagi, her parents, Hiroshi and Lori Doy, and her sisters, Nicole and Megan. Um, she will be very busy and we wish you the best, Stephanie. So congratulations. Um, do we have any other announcements? Did I miss? anything okay if not we truly thank you for attending to share the dharma remember you can uh, tell friends they can view our recorded services on youtube and please don't forget to subscribe and so i'll hand it back to sensei um i believe uh then she can take on the next part of the program thank you okay Thank you, Darlene. Um, thanks so much, everybody. Um, so that will actually conclude the service portion. And um, I understand if some of you do have to go and, and Sensei, I understand if you too um, also have to be on your way to conduct your own service. Um, but uh, we truly appreciate you joining us uh, during this uh, very special occasion of Hanamatsuri. Um, and I hope that I could uh, visit you again or you can come here and visit some of your family members as well um, in, in the Central Valley and in Stockton too. So thank you again, Sensei, for taking time to be with us. But of course, if you do have um, a, a moment, you're more than welcome to stay for the um, Dharma School presentation. So at this time, what I'd like to do is stop streaming um, to allow for our children to um, have their images be seen if they um, choose to do so. So thanks so much, everybody.